So let's say you're about to go live on Twitch, so you decide to just tweet out a regular tweet to let people know. That probably wouldn't get much attention, but let's say you tweet out a brand new GIF with your channel colors, your logo, completely customized, letting people know that you're live. Yeah, that might do it. Hey guys, what's up, it's Bravity, and welcome back to another video here on my channel. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. So today we're talking about GIFs, and more specifically, custom GIFs that you would post on Twitter that have your logo and your branding and are announcing something like maybe you're live on Twitch, maybe you posted a new YouTube video, maybe you joined an org, or maybe you just hit a milestone on one of your social medias. Like recently, you might've seen me post this 5,000 subscriber GIF on Twitter, just letting people know that we hit 5,000 subscribers on YouTube, and it's just a bit of a, a custom way that has your logo, your brand, Branding, and just a really special way to announce that you're doing something on Twitter and grabs people's attention a bit more and make them go, man, he's got a lot of production value. He's got gifts created for his stuff. It's not just a regular tweet of just words letting people know what's going on. There's a specific GIF that is created for this person and it is a really awesome way to get people to engage with your tweets a little bit more and grab their attention. So we're about to jump into After Effects and take a look at how to do that. But before we get started, I just wanted to say that if you do not own After Effects and you still wanna have a bunch of custom overlays and things for your Twitch channel, your YouTube channel, and just have awesome custom graphics that you can edit and throw in your own colors and logos and sounds and whatnot, make sure you check out the link in the description for placeit.net. It is an incredible website that has a bunch of smart templates that you can edit directly on the website to have an awesome custom look to your Twitch and YouTube channel. You don't need After Effects, you don't need any kind of program, and it is incredible. And right now, the link in my description will give you 15% off a monthly or yearly subscription to placeit.net. So check that out if you do not own After Effects and want to create some awesome stuff. But for the gifts, let's jump in to After Effects. All right, guys, so here we are inside of After Effects. This is a completely blank and new project. All I've done is import my logo because we're going to be using that for the GIF. So make sure you import your logo and any other assets you might want to throw in here because you can customize it. You don't have to follow what I do click for click, but if you want to, you can. So we're going to start with a new composition here. We're going to click that, and we're going to make this uh, 1920 by 1080. That is the correct video size. That is HD video, 1920 by 1080, and we'll call it uh, GIF like that. So there we go, we got our new composition and it is time to begin creating the GIF. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to layer, new, solid, and let's create a new solid and call it BG for background and we're gonna make it a dark blue. So let's see, maybe like that color like that. That's a nice little dark blue, cool. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the I am live animation part. We're gonna start with that because it's kind of the hardest part. So we're gonna grab our text tool right up here and we're just gonna click and we're gonna type out live, not liver, live and we want it to be white so we're going to come over here select it and change it to white instead of purple we're going to up our size a little bit and we are going to leave the font i actually like gothic as a font so this is century gothic pro that the font we're going to use and we're going to make sure that our uh, our little uh, anchor point is right in the center just like that and instead of saying just live let's make it say i'm live just like that cool and we got we got that nice and big now we got to remove our anchor point now just like that there we go and now we can use our align tools to just kind of align it in the center like that if you don't see any of these tools over here your effects your character your align any of that stuff any of these windows that i'm using make sure you come up to window and you can see all these blue check marks these are all the ones i have turned on so you can turn on the line here you can turn on characters here and uh, this is where you find all that stuff so you can turn it all on here but there we go, we've now got I am live, and we're gonna take off this stroke. There's a little bit of a purple stroke I just saw, so you can take down the stroke just like that. So there we go, I'm live. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna duplicate it, and we're gonna grab the one down here, we're gonna toggle it down into the transform, and we're gonna move it up in the position just like this, and we're gonna stylize this a little bit. We don't want it to look the exact same, so we're gonna click on it, and we're actually gonna click on this little white box with the red uh, slash through it when we're on the fill color. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna make it no fill. So there's now no fill and it's just showing through to the background. And then we're gonna click on our outline and we're gonna make our outline white. And then we're gonna up our outline a little bit just like this. So there we go. Now we got a cool little outline effect of the I'm live. So we're gonna go ahead and duplicate that one. And now we're gonna move this one down like this and kind of line it up in the exact same spot as the other one. Beautiful, just like that. We'll go ahead and duplicate it again here, and then we'll move this one down even further, just like that. And if this bottom one kind of goes out of the uh, goes out of the composition like that, it doesn't really matter because we're gonna 
cut that off here in a minute. And now we're gonna duplicate this one and we'll go ahead and move this one up as well. So there we go, we got this really cool I am live stack with the solid one in the center and then a bunch of outlines. What we are now going to do is we're gonna make sure we pre-compose these. So we're gonna select all these I am live texts. We're gonna right click and we're gonna to go to pre-compose and we're gonna call it our, not test, our text layer and hit okay just like that. So now we've got it all as one layer just like that. And now it's time to animate the I'm live text layer. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna just double click on our text layer and it's gonna take us into a separate composition where we've got all those separate layers that we just had and we can uh, go ahead and edit this. It's really hard to see these because it's on the uh, transparent background. So we can click this little button right here and that'll put it on a black background so we can see what we're doing a little bit better. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first gonna animate this little middle I'm live that is solid. So we are going to come down here, toggle it down, maybe zoom in on everything a little bit, go to transform and go to scale and hit the little stopwatch next to scale. This is gonna start our keyframes so that we can animate it. So hit that stopwatch and then we're gonna move forward maybe like 50 frames and that's a bit much. Let's go like 30 frames. So we're gonna go forward like 30 frames and then add another keyframe by hitting this button. And that just means at this point we want it to be this size because we want it to scale in. So at this point we want it to be this size but at the beginning we can use this little arrow here to go back to the beginning. We want it to be zero. We want it to be gone so that it comes in from nothing just like that. So there's our animation just like that. Now we're gonna add the keyframe easy ease stuff that I always add. So make sure you select your keyframes, right click, go to keyframe assistant and easy ease. And then while they're selected, hit into the speed graph editor. And we are going to go ahead and edit this speed graph to just look like this. So you can select this point, grab the little handle and draw it to look kind of like that. And now we have it looking like that. That is beautiful, it comes in fast and then slows down. What a clean looking animation. Now it's time to animate the I'm live stuff coming in on the sides here. So what we're going to do is once this is just about all the way in, we're going to have these start popping into existence. So we want it to be like right here. This one is popping in. We're going to go ahead and hit command shift D or control shift D and we can cut it right there and have it delete the everything before that. So there it is, I'm live. Now it's gonna pop into existence right where we cut it just like that. Now we need to cut the one down here at the same exact time. So Command or Control Shift D. So now you've got those two popping into place and then we need these other two to pop into place at the same time a little bit later. So we'll go ahead and split those, delete those, and now we've got this. And that is pretty much all we're gonna do to animate this. So now what we need to do is we need to head back into our GIF composition here. And you'll see now we got the animation in here all inside of one layer. So what we can do is we can start stylizing this a little bit. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna grab our mask tool. So it's this little rectangle tool up here. It might be on a different shape for you, but make sure it's on the, the rectangle. And we're gonna just draw a mask like this, kind of at the top of this, maybe like that. Perfect. And what we're going to do is we're going to set it to subtract. So instead of only seeing that, we're going to actually cut that section off. And then we're going to drop down our mask properties here. And we're going to set the feather to maybe like 250, I think looks good. So there we go. You can see it almost looks like the I'm live is fading off into nothing. And that is a really cool look. And then we're going to draw a second layer or a second mask just like that. Do the same exact thing. Make sure we set it to subtract, hit the properties and go to feather and then 250 on the feather there as well. And there we go. Now we've got the I'm live just kind of fading off into nothingness. Looks pretty cool. And now what we're gonna do is we are going to duplicate this and put some stuff going on in the background. So for the text layer here, we're just gonna hit control or command D to duplicate it. And we're going to move it off to the side, maybe just a little bit like and eh, like that looks pretty cool. And then we can use our align tools to make sure it's level. And then we're gonna duplicate it again and move it over onto this side and have like the VE coming in like that. That looks pretty nice like that. So now we've got some stuff in the background, but as you can see, these ones on the side are way too bright and in your face. So how we're gonna deal with that is we're gonna right click on them. We're gonna go up to blending mode and you, I wanna set them to overlay. And as you can see, that kind of puts them kind of dark and overlaid the background. Looks really cool back there. Let's do that this, with this one as well. Right click on the text, blending mode, and then overlay just like that. Beautiful. Now we've got those in the back, this in the front, and you can see they all come in at the same time here. I actually want to kind of vary that a little bit. So these first, the first one is going to come in, but right about here here maybe, I kind of want the second ones to start coming in. So these two, we're gonna hold shift, select them both and move them down in the timeline a little bit. And then they're gonna start coming in a little bit separate. So as you can see, the middle one comes in, 
then the two side two come in. That's a really cool animation there for the I'm Live stuff. We've got one more thing to add, and that is the little red recording thing up the top. So how we're gonna add that is we're gonna go up to Layer, New, Solid, and we're gonna create a brand new red solid. So maybe like, a, maybe like that color red, hit OK. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go up to this layer mask that we just clicked on, but change it from the rectangle to the ellipse, and we're gonna hold down shift so we get a perfect circle, and we're just gonna draw a little perfect circle like that. And there we go, we've got a beautiful little red recording dot. We're gonna move the anchor point by selecting that tool and move it into the center to make it easier to move around and animate. So just like that. And then we're gonna move it up into the top corner. Let's fit this and fit it up into the top corner like that. So that's just a little bit of a cool stylistic choice to have this little red recording dot up here. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna animate this a little bit. So we're gonna go to the beginning here and we're gonna go to the transform and we're gonna click on the keyframe next to scale so that we can keyframe it a little bit. We're gonna move forward a couple frames and we're gonna go to like 90 scale. And then we can grab these two and we can duplicate them just like this, and we can start pasting them over and over again at roughly the same distance apart from each other. That one was a little far there. So you can also do this using expressions, but I wanted to keep it nice and simple for you guys. So there we go, that should be long enough for that animation. There we go, that's a much slower and basic looking animation. Cool, that is all we needed. So now we've got a red recording dot up in the corner, just kind of pulsing, looks pretty cool. So now we need to do the logo stuff at the beginning. So what we can do now is we can select everything we just animated except for the background and we can move it down in the timeline. Then we've got plenty of blank space to do a logo animation and then this stuff will come in. So <clears throat> what we're gonna do, we're gonna grab our logo, we're gonna drop it into place and we are going to have it just kind of scale into place. So I just wanna grab the logo hit the drop down, go to transform, go to the scale, hit the keyframe, move forward a couple frames, like 25, hit this button to add another keyframe, this arrow to go back to the beginning, and then set the scale to zero, so now it scales in just like that. Nice, so now we need to select these two, do the right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease, speed graph, draw this little shape right here, and now I've got a much smoother and cleaner looking animation. Beautiful. Now I wanna add a little bit of a rotation to it, but not like a regular rotation that you'd see. I actually want to add a, uh, a 3D rotation. So we're gonna hit this little box check mark next to the uh, logo, and that is going to add, open up our 3D properties. And we're gonna add a rotation on, I believe, the Y axis. Yes, the Y axis, so it moves like this. So. We're gonna set a keyframe right when it finishes the scale in on the Y rotation. And then we're gonna go back to the beginning and we're gonna go ahead and rotate this a little bit, maybe like mm, 100 degrees, sure. And we're gonna grab these and do the same keyframe, easy ease, speed graph, this shape. And now let's take a look. <clears throat> that seems to be a little fast. So let's go ahead and grab these and slow it down. There we go, that's a pretty cool look. We can actually probably have this rotation go a bit further here, so let's go 120, negative 120 actually, there we go. Much better, there we go. So we've got a little bit of a rotation happening at the beginning, and then it kind of eases in and finishes the scale. Cool, just like that. And then once we finish that, we wanna have it leave the frame before we have the I'm live stuff come in. So we're gonna set a keyframe for the position and we're gonna move forward a couple frames and then we are going to drag it all the way out of the frame just like that. Keyframe assistant, easy ease as always. But this time when we have stuff leaving the frame, we're gonna do it the opposite way. So we're gonna have it start slow. So we're gonna grab this arm and move it that way. We're gonna have it start slow and then speed up at the end. So now if we go back here and play that, You'll see it comes in and then it goes out really fast. It's a little fast. Let's extend this and move it out like that. There we go. That's a cool looking effect. Perfect. And now right when that's about to leave the frame, we're gonna have the I'm live stuff start to come in. So right about here, we're gonna go ahead and collapse all this, bring all of this stuff back by holding down shift, selecting it all and dragging it forward until we start seeing the animation come in. There we go, we've got the red dot and we've got the animations coming in. Beautiful, just like that. So we've got logo and then I'm live, just like that. Logo, I'm live. And now it is time for the final part and that is just adding in the branding at the end, telling people where to go, where you're live at. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna grab our background layer and we're gonna duplicate it. And we're gonna go ahead and position it kind of specifically between these text layers in a way. So let's see, we wanna cover up this one, but we don't wanna cover up these two. So we're gonna put it right in between so it looks like that. So we've still got the, the stuff going on in the background. We've still got the red dot, but we cover up that text layer. So what we wanna do is we wanna figure out when we want it to happen. We just want the I'm live to come in 
just like that. And then we want it to kind of wipe out. So what we're going to do, drop down our background, transform position. We're going to move forward a little bit, add another keyframe, and then we're going to go back to the beginning and move it up like this. So you see it kind of wipes into place just like that. And for this one, you don't really have to add in the easy ease when it's something coming in like that. You can if you want, but I'm not going to. So there you go. You got the I'm live coming in. You got logo, I'm live and then it wipes out just like that. And now we're gonna add in our final text layer. So we're gonna add the text layer here, type in like twitch.tv forward slash gravity M. We're gonna go ahead and select all that and we're gonna move it down in size like this a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and pull off our, uh, our uh, outline and we're gonna take away our no fill here and put it back to white just like that. And actually I like to take the Twitch part and make it kind of like a Twitch purple so we can do that by just doing something like that. There we go. So that's like close to a Twitch purple, just like that. I think that looks pretty cool. We can select our text layer now, go to the align and get it right in the center beautifully, just like that. That looks pretty cool. If you want to, I've been saying that looks pretty cool a lot, <laughs> but if you want to go add a little bit to it, you can add a drop shadow just by searching in the effects drop shadow and add it on there. And as you can see, it adds a little bit of black drop shadow behind it to add a little bit more detail. But what we can do with this, a way that we can animate it in that's super easy and super cool is we can grab our Twitch layer and we are Twitch text layer and we can grab this little parent tool and we can parent it to the background once it's finished animating in. So then if we go backwards, you see when it wipes in to cover that up, our Twitch layer now comes in with that. So let's go ahead and play this all the way through and take a look. So we got logo and then we've got the I'm live and then it swoop into the twitch.tv forward slash gravity m that is a really cool I am live gif that you can post on Twitter every time you go live. But it's not a GIF yet. It's still inside of After Effects. So how we're going to make this a GIF is we're going to go ahead and set our end points. So we're going to go to the end of the animation, like right about there. And we're going to go ahead and hit N on the keyboard to set an end point in for end. So there you go, just like that. And then with our timeline or our composition selected down here, we're going to go up to composition, add to render queue. And for the uh, settings, we're going to go to where it says lossless in blue. And we're going to change the format from QuickTime to a PNG sequence. So PNG is a little bit higher quality than JPEG. That's why I do it. So PNG sequence just like that. And then if you have any alpha channels, you can do um, RGB plus alpha, but we're just going to do RGB for now because we don't have any alpha things to worry about. So PNG sequence, RGB, hit OK, and then output to where it's in blue right here. You can click there, name it, whatever you want, save it wherever you want, and then you just want to export it out. It's going to create a folder for you with hundreds and hundreds of photos in it because what a PNG sequence is, is it's just using every single frame in the video to create a photo, and we're going to import those into Photoshop and make a GIF out of it. So I'm going to go ahead and save this out, render it out, and we'll head into Photoshop. So here we are inside of Photoshop, and once you're in here, you just want to go up to File, and then Open, and once you go to Open, you're just going to open up that PNG sequence. I'll show you that real quick. So once you navigated to where you saved your GIF, you'll see it created a folder for you, probably named whatever the composition was. And if we click inside of that folder, you can see here are the hundreds of photos I was telling you about that it created for the entirety of the GIF. And what you want to do is you want to select the first photo and only the first photo. So just click it. And then down here next to open, you'll see there's a button that says, or a little checkbox that says image sequence. Make sure you check image sequence so it knows to pull every single other photo in the folder with it and make sure you're on the first one and then hit open. And what it's going to do is going to pop up a frame rate box like this. So whatever you set the frame rate to in After Effects, you just want to match it inside of Photoshop. So I set it to 60 frames per second on my composition. So we'll leave it 60 here and just hit OK. And here we go. We've got our GIF inside of Photoshop, our video inside of Photoshop. If you did not know, Photoshop actually does have some video capabilities. So you'll see we got a timeline down here that is actually playing our GIF all the way together using all those photos put into a video format. So once you've done that, you just want to have it down here selected and you want to go up to file. You want to go to export and you want to go to save for web legacy. This is where you create GIFs. Anytime you want to create a GIF, you just save it as a sequence of photos. You open it up just like that. And then you go to save for web legacy. And once you're in here, there's a couple settings I want to tell you about and a couple things you need to be reminded of. Now the save for web legacy window, first things first is very old. Like it says, it says legacy. That means it's not really supported anymore. It's very dated technology inside of Photoshop. And this means that it kind of runs pretty poorly and pretty slow. Um, but this is still the best way to do it. So it's just put up with the text box or put up with this dialog box here because it's going to load things up very slowly and can get a little bit of annoying, a little annoying. So what we do is once it loads up inside of here, 
You want to make sure that it's a GIF. You want to make sure that the diffusion, where this is set to diffusion, not no dither. You want diffusion. You want the dither to be 100%. And then down here, you've got your image size. Now, this should actually probably change. If you're creating a GIF, 1920 by 1080 is probably far too large. So you can take this down to whatever size you want, maybe like 600. And you see it'll adjust the horizontal pixels for you as well to bring the image size down. Twitter has, I believe, like a 2 megabyte GIF limit when you're uploading to it. So you need to make sure you're shrinking your GIFs down. If you ever try to upload a GIF and it says it's having issues or it can't do it, that's probably because it's too large. So make sure you come in here and either lower your quality by lowering these colors here, but I would recommend keeping it at 256 or lower the image size down here. That's a good way to do it. And then the most important thing is down here under animation where it says looping options, make sure you select forever. So you'll see it's set to once right now. And now it's updating the size adjustment that I just did that 600 and uh, by 338 it's going to update that real quick so that's why it's taking a little bit but once that finishes you'll see the looping options here so there we go the looping options you see it's set to once by default and that means your gif would play for people and then it would just stop at the end until they reloaded the page and then it would play again and then it would just stop and that's not a true gif a gif just repeats and repeats and repeats so make sure you hit forever for the looping options so when people just sit there and watch it when it finishes it loops and plays again and then you just want to hit save here and it's going to allow you to name it whatever you want save it wherever you want and bam it gives you it in a gif format ready to upload wherever you want to upload gifs but that is pretty much it for this video guys i hope you enjoyed it if you want your own custom gif and you don't want to build it inside of After Effects. Fun fact, the GIF that I created in this video is available down in the description as an After Effects template. You can jump in there, replace your logo in the Your Logo Here tab. You can change the colors in the way you change the colors typically in my templates, and then you can export it the exact same way that I just showed you as a PNG sequence, bring it into Photoshop, create your own GIF without doing your own animation. So make sure you download that down in the description to get a free GIF, and then people will click on your tweets and join your streams because it's much more eye-catching than just a regular tweet with just words. But I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you guys just take it and run with it and make some more stuff and not just follow this click for click. Make org announcements, make subscriber milestones announcements, make uh, I'm live on Twitch, I'm live on YouTube, new YouTube videos out. Just start using GIFs more when you can create custom and clean looking ones with your branding like this. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.